One of the things that I find so exciting about the early Jewish community in Amsterdam, particularly in the 16th, 17th, and 18th centuries, is the fact that it was a place that drew in people from very diverse backgrounds, surprisingly diverse backgrounds, and they came together to produce some tremendous artifacts of Jewish culture that later went on to have very illustrious careers. One of those documents is the Amsterdam Haggadah of 1695, and in particular, the copper engravings that really set the signal for many, many more Haggadahs for centuries, right up to and including the Maxwell House Haggadah that was very popular here in America. Now, we all love reading Haggadahs with great illustrations, and the person that we have to thank for the Amsterdam Haggadah is an unusual individual named Abraham Bar Yaakov, whose years were 1669 to 1730. He was born in Germany, probably in the Rhineland, and uh, what little we know about his background is that he was actually a convert to Judaism. He was originally a Christian pastor, a Protestant pastor, and um, he moved to Amsterdam at the age of 26, and that's where he converted and uh, began to, you know, use his talents as an engraver and presumably as a pastor because he had great familiarity with the illustrated Bibles in circulation at the time, and he brought those talents together in the Amsterdam Haggadah. We know just a handful of facts about him. He was apparently married twice. We don't know about his first wife. Perhaps that was when he was still Christian. His second wife, however, was Deborah Proops, a very famous family of printers. Her husband was actually employed by her brother, Solomon ben Joseph Proops, who published the 1712 reprint of the 1695 Haggadah that Abraham Bar Jacob is associated with. Um, and it was Abraham Bar, Aramaic rather than Ben, Yaakov. And normally with a convert, you add Yaakov Bar Avraham, but there's no question about it because he referred to himself elsewhere as Mi Mishpachat Avraham Avinu, meaning from the family of Abraham, our father. At any rate, let's have a look at this amazing Haggadah just for a few minutes. So uh, here's the title page of it, absolutely gorgeous. And you see there's representation of uh, Moses on the right, the lawgiver, and Aaron, the high priest, on the left. Extremely influential design that was repeated again over and over again. And copper engraving, which is a technological uh, upgrade from previous forms of illustrations. Here you can see gorgeous rendition of uh, the daughter of Pharaoh receiving or finding baby Moses in the Nile. You can see in right in the center of the river in the, the mid-ground there is Moses in the basket and then it's sort of compressed timeline. In the back you can see it looks like the, the maidservant, not the daughter of Pharaoh herself as we might have in the Midrashic tradition, reaches out to receive Moses. And then on the left side of the foreground you see apparently the uh, maidservant presenting presenting the baby Moses to um, the, the daughter of Pharaoh herself, who was so designated by a, a crown. A uh, fascinating kind of uh, very detailed and gorgeous illustration. You can imagine people sitting around the Seder table in Amsterdam enjoying this, and then really all over Europe. If the previous image might have appealed to the young daughters in the family, perhaps with maternal instincts, this one is definitely designed for the young boys in the family with uh, this dramatic image of Moses beating the Egyptian uh, who presented a danger as described in the book of Exodus. And you can see all around are various you know, activities involved with building Pitom and Ramses, the uh, cities described as the, the slave cities that the uh, the Jews were involved with in the book of Exodus. So really gorgeous detailed illustrations, very evocative and so on. It's also famous for uh, being the site of a very early Hebrew map. Uh, you can see it's laid out uh, east to west here. Here's a colorized version of it, also very interesting looking. Um, but I think what is most fascinating about this is in this type of era, the whole idea of plagiarism was like not very well defined. And so here is a classic image from the Haggadah that shows the pictures of the four sons, right? You've got on the right the wise son, and then second from the right is the wicked son, uh, the third from the right is the simple son, and then at the very left is the one who does not know how to ask. And you'd see they're actually, you know, different in size as well. But when you look a little bit more deeply, you see that uh, actually these four sons uh, were clearly taken from early models. And in fact, 
many of the images in the Amsterdam Haggadah were simply taken from earlier biblical illustrations that came from Christian sources, which is perhaps something that our artist might have become familiar with through his earlier Christian study. Here, for example, you see the four sons uh, in the Amsterdam Haggadah is in the top left image. And by the way, ironically, it says underneath here in the German, Nachdruck verboten, uh, you know, reproduction is forbidden, which uh, it's ironic because, of course, this is exactly what he was doing. But this is also from 1931. It's a reprint from then, so it's already well in the public domain. At any rate, three of the four sons are simply flipped in mirror image and taken from entirely different illustrations drawn from the Iconis Biblical of Mateus Marian of Basel, uh, a mid-17th century print of the Bible with illustrations. So you can see, for example, the Chacham, the wise son, is actually from a picture of Hannibal, who's offering a sacrifice in the top right. Uh, the Russia, the wicked son, is actually a Roman soldier in the bottom right fleeing a battle. And then on the left, the, uh, the simple son is ironically based on a model of the prophet Samuel in the lower left. And then he's just flipped uh, as well and a hat is added to kind of enforce the uh, image. So the whole idea of what could be borrowed, what could be built upon, what could be augmented was really very fluid in the 17th century. I'll just wrap it up with one quick look at his own signature, which is uh, really beautiful and evocative in many ways. It, uh, you can see that right there in the bottom of this image, it says Avram Bar Yaakov. And I find it interesting that he chose to specifically illustrate his name underneath a depiction of a story from the book of Jonah, the book of Yonah, in which the, uh, the stormy sea throws Yonah overboard. He's swallowed up by some kind of aquatic creature and then spit out safely on dry land. And I just wonder, it's very tempting to think, is this what Abraham Bar Yaakov thought of himself? That he too came from a very tumultuous era. He landed in Amsterdam and he found his wife, he found a family, he found his metier as a copper engraver, and finally as a Jew. Fascinating, don't you think? I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope we'll have a chance to explore Amsterdam together this fall with Kosher River Cruises. Thanks very much for watching.